Oh, you love to play. Oh, you love to play. Don't your comments won't relate. Sign is on my page for you. Oh, my God, he changed. Young life, I can't see back on my. I just need some brains so I could keep myself in order. You got problems, she got problems, only I got 411 problems. Hey, how what's up, y'all? It's time for another story time. So, as you can tell by the title and by the thumbnail, this is a story about me and Olivia. Olivia is in this story time. Also, you can go look up this video. So, yeah. This is also part of the Church Chronicle series because I met Olivia at church. Now, I will say, you have to be careful because, how can I say this? I know, like, sometimes we put, um, like, we, we'll have church hurt and then not want to go to church anymore. Here's my thing. You can meet bad people anywhere. Um, you can get hurt by people anywhere. So, things that happen at church shouldn't stop you from going to church. That should be a personal decision, not something to deal with the people. If that makes sense. Because people, you can meet people and they can come into your life anywhere and they can hurt you. Right? But also, be careful. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. So, um, this story takes place the year, ooh, 90s? Yes. 98? 98? Yes, 98. 98, 99 year 98 99 somewhere in there um i think yes 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 98 99 somewhere in there so um i met olivia through a lady that um was attending a church i was attending a church and she was doing certain she was feeding college students she was feeding college students and people who had just gotten to the base because in this area um there's a military base so we she was feeding people who had just gotten to the base that was attending the same church and also feeding college students because anybody who's been to college know that college students are broke and food is hard to come by and you really get tired of noodles so when somebody offer you um a good hot cooked home meal you want to take it so um this lady she um her and her husband were in the military she had two children and she would feed college students on a certain sunday in her in her uh town home she would you know she made it she made um I won't necessarily say a, an agreement with the church, but let the church know that she was willing to do this for the college students. College students could come to her house and eat. 
now it was a good little drive because she lived close to the military base but again when you're a college student and it's a free meal and it's the opportunity you for opportunity for you to take food home nine times out of ten you go and then it's like like i said she was at church also be careful with that because when you are in a situation where you are somewhat semi-vulnerable people can seek you out and take advantage of you in any situation but at church too okay so anyway um i'm at the college students feeding dinner whatever and this is where i meet olivia um she also starts attending the church and so with me um being you know going to the dinners because she did it i can't remember how often she did it but every time she did it i would go so um but i wouldn't be by myself it would be a plethora of college students not a lot but enough so we um we met there so we kind of hit it off it was kind of cool we wasn't um buddy buddy at first like it was more of a cordial type situation it was you know like a speaking type oh your face is familiar because she also went to the church so we started hanging out more to the point where um i wasn't going to the lady house anymore i was really hanging out with her in her room on base so we would hang out together um and she would also come to my apartment so i had an apartment off campus my second year my first my first semester was it my first semester my first semester i stayed on campus quarters we had quarters then they didn't have semesters we had quarters yes so my fall quarter i stayed on campus um it was cheaper to stay off campus then and my first quarter i partied anyway so my first quarter my mom paid for it, and after me failing my first quarter she was like i'm not doing it again she wasn't paying for it so i, I was on my own so i moved off campus because anybody who knows when you take out loans for yourself you get after they pay for all your classes your books or whatever you get an access check too so i was looking forward to that too and was i working and i also started working was looking for a job but anyway i was staying off campus so, so she would come to my apartment and i had two other roommates <clears throat> so she would come to my apartment um i would be at um on base with her we would hang out it, it it got to a point where we was pretty much inseparable and we came up with the story well no she came up with the story excuse me that we were sisters and we had the same father totally not true <laughs> but that's just how we was pipping it i guess because we were always together so my roommates kind of fell for it which was weird because they met me before they met her but i mean we kind of pimped it we're like oh my we just found out type situation like oh my god we just found out that we're sisters i don't know <laughs> i don't know it flowed anyway we hung together all the time all the time right so it got to the point where no matter where i went she wanted to go she she it was like she always needed to be a part of whatever i was doing she always needed to be around she wherever i go she felt like she needed to go which was kind of weird because she had friends before me you knew people before me but you would still introduce me as <clears throat> as your sister now i came up with doing this story and I, like i started thinking about certain things because i watched this movie on prime called salt salt burn um which was 
very very interesting <laughs> very very interesting but i i got it from what well, i saw it on tiktok which let me look you know look it up to go look at it and then that's what got me to thinking like yo like people actually do this in real life where they are and sometimes insert themselves in your life but still do like weird stuff behind your back anyway so lo and behold like i said we all were cool because i met olivia through this lady who was doing dinners well i don't remember how or why her and the lady fell out but they did which <clears throat> kind of implemented her coming and spending more time with me because her and the lady fell out because she used to be with the lady all the time which was how I met her so we was hanging out all the time and then I guess with us hanging out all the time she was kind of implemented into the other friend groups as well but she was also in the choir along with me being in the choir so like I don't know it kind of just started meshing together like meshing <laughs> together and not like looking back now you don't pay attention to it as it's going on but looking back now it's like yo that's weird that's weird that's suspicious like you don't you don't pay attention to it until later like <laughs> catch 22 you know like hindsight 2020 you don't you don't see it until it's happening i mean you don't see it while it's happening you see it after anyway so like i said like we were just meshing like it seemed like our lives was just consistently meshing and i wasn't really paying it any attention because it was like okay she i hung out at her you know on the base with her so her coming to my apartment wasn't a big issue so the first thing that was brought up to me was I used to babysit for um one of the ministers of the church right I used to babysit for them so <laughs> the wife was like why is she always around you? Like she was like, I get I get a bad feeling about it. Like she's always around you. She was like, it seems like you're her property almost, so to speak. Um, she was like, it's it's like she she doesn't want you out of her sight or when some you know, other people come up to talk to you, she likes to insert herself in a conversation, like it's just weird like it's it's giving and at this time the only movie that could be referenced was um single white female and if you have seen that movie you understand what she was saying because even to the point where like easter um like we were dressing alike like she would go by dresses and we were wearing the same dress like for Easter, actually it was three of us that had on the same dress for Easter, which was planned, but she bought the dresses. Like it was, like even for Christmas, like she would, like if she bought something, she was like, oh, sis, I bought you this shirt too. Like it was like a, it was like a twins thing. You know how like a mom be like, oh, my twins need to dress alike. And once the twins go through puberty, it's like, I want to do something different. I don't want to look like my sister. Not all of them, but some of them, like they want their own personality. <clears throat> and it seemed like she would, whatever she bought, she would make sure she bought one for me. And it's like, girl. I don't know, it was, it was weird. It was weird. Looking back, it was weird. During the time, it, it like, it didn't register to me. It was like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's cute. And Editing Angel here. <laughs> the reason why I said, okay, yeah, it's cute. And I know y'all like, I'm the type of person where if I see something from my friends and I know that they like it, I get it. I get it like <laughs> busy b loves the gators so if i go out and i buy something for my dogs and i see that they have it 
and and the Gators, I get it. Even though I'm not a Gators fan, I'll be like, oh, girl, like I did that. I bought, I saw a mask for me, for my dogs, and I saw a Gators mask. And I was like, oh, let me get this for her. Not thinking like it's planned, like strategic. I'm not going out and be like, oh. Because, like, my friends do the same thing. Like, they see something. They be like, oh, you like this. I got something for you. And they'll they'll buy it. They'll look at a shirt and be like, oh, girl, I thought about you. And sometimes they'll either send me a picture and be like, if you're in the store and you see this, get it. Or they'll buy it and be like, I got something for you. Because when I saw it, I thought of you. But they don't. we don't buy, like, the same thing. Like, I, I know. It didn't register. It just didn't register. And I, you know, like, I wish I still had my photo album because I could show you the actual pictures of, like, how we was dressed tonight. Like, she would buy Easter dresses, like, <laughs> and we would be dressed up. We was hanging together so much till the people at one point was like, like, y'all sleeping together? Like, which is crazy because it seems like every friend that I'm close with female wise people say that which is crazy like you can't have a close friend but they would they would be like yo y'all sleeping together anyway <laughs> we worked but it just seems like she would emulate anything that was happening in my life and that was going on she would try to emulate copy or insert herself into it which at the time was extremely unhealthy, but I wasn't paying attention to that. The first sort of red flag, as we say now, that I recognized was we went to her hometown. Did we go to her hometown? No, the first red flag was we... <sighs> I would tell my molestation um, experience and so like that would come up and so she started telling hers which I had no clue about until we were in a public situation about it and so it was like okay like okay I let that be you know what I'm saying like because there are so many people men and women who have gone through that so it's like oh, okay yo so we can relate on that cool right let that be the next thing was um I'm trying to make sure I'm keeping it in order the next thing was um the issue with my roommates like it I was moving out money was short I wasn't working um so it was like I could barely cover my rent my mom was like and this is why I do um previews over and over and over because I just remember the part so <clears throat> she was before I moved out like she was staying in my apartment with me as well like she wasn't going this this is around the time like like i said she was beefing with her um with her roommate so it was like she would she would be in my apartment too like i said we was hanging out but she would be in my apartment too but i i just remember like she wouldn't which it kind of makes sense now why my roommates were kind of upset because she would come on friday and not leave till um like sunday sometimes monday um and then that's when she was like you know i'm having issues with um with my roommate so basically like she was staying like in my room because i that in the apartment i had the master bedroom so she was staying in you know in my room and then i realized and i was like wait like like listening to the story i'm like wait a minute like she had clothes in my closet she had clothes <laughs> like in the apartment like she was you know what i'm saying like she didn't have a key but she was there like seemed like from the weekend because she was saying because of like church and all that stuff it was like oh because you know like it's easier 
for me like to do church like i i i remember because even like it's, it went from like the weekend like she was coming on friday and then it kind of pushed back to thursday because thursday we had choir rehearsal and then it kind of pushed back wednesday to bible study because so we had bible study choir rehearsal on thursday then friday we may or may not be going somewhere church wise and then saturday we had choir rehearsal then sunday we had eight o'clock service and then we had regular service and then sometimes we would have afternoon service so or we had something else going on or some kind of or it was a funeral saturday like it it made sense then like for her to be there because she was like instead of me driving away from the base like i could just stay like with you and like you know help out but i don't know i kind of just didn't want her to help out because you know how, like once people start paying money it's like you know, like, when you live with people, it's either you paying the money, even with you paying the money, like, they feel like they're in control of shit, and they want to control how you do your life and control how you live. And it was like, I just didn't want her to pay money and be like, oh, I pay money here. And you feel like you should be there all the time, but then she still end up being there all the time. Yeah. Yes, I know. So, I had to figure it out. And so, once I left the dorms i went to stay with this lady and when i went to stay with the lady she came too now i'm not even gonna trip because once she came a lot of people in our friend group came as well like okay <laughs> so she came which it, it was weird because she lived on the military base which is free and so at this time when i was having trouble with my roommates she started having trouble with hers and the girl was cool now i'm not gonna front because you never know what goes on behind closed doors because my mom was a no-nonsense sergeant about her business but when it came down to being in love with a ninja she her judgment was clouded you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, the girl was cool, but I just didn't understand you leaving free and your job was out there. Like, everything was out there, and to get to the base was a good little drive for you to stay with me and this lady, which you had to pay. Like, we weren't living there for free. You had We had to supply our own food. We had to pay her for water. We had to pay her for lights. So, it didn't make sense to me. And Keish was there, too. But Keish mom was like, once it got to the point where she was over there a lot, too, Keish mom was like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It just, it's weird now. That's weird. That's suspicious. And so it was like in this lady's house, she had all these girls that was in the house. Like, and we was all chilling, having a good time until she kicked me out about, um, I took some pictures and she didn't like the pictures. I'm not going to explain what the pictures was, but I think I did before, but she didn't, she didn't like the pictures. And as I told her, I was like, listen, I'll give you the pictures after they're developed because there was other pictures on the camera roll because at this point it was a 35 millimeter camera but we had to turn in the film to get it developed like there was nothing instant it wasn't camera phones type situation it was a 35 millimeter camera and you had to get the film developed at Walmart which was 35 cents a print but she didn't want to wait for that she wanted the films which would def which would destroy the rest of the pictures so i didn't want to give her she was like either you give me the film or i gotta get out which is i was like well, i'll get out and then once i develop i'll bring you the pictures which is how i moved in with busy b and once i i left and moved in with busy b truth be told not olivia just didn't leave everybody left like everybody dispersed and she felt the the lady felt the way but oh well <laughs> oh well i went and moved in with busy b and when i went and moved in with busy b she came too i thought she was gonna go back to the base but that's when she kicked 
you know, the spill love is three, you know, is two. I mean, three is better than two when dividing the rent, which was true, but it wasn't my place. So I ran it by Busy B, and Busy B was cool because she all about math as well. Both of us are not thinking, Busy B and I are not thinking like it's weird because, again, we all sing in a choir, we all go to the same church. We all see each other on multiple occasions at the church. So we're familiar with each other. So we're not thinking anything weird. Yet I had different people saying, something's not right. <laughs> something's not right. Something's off, right? So we move in with Busy Bee. She's there. And this is when things start to get stupid now i don't remember if the military police had came before she started no so the first crazy really really crazy incident was um me and my son's father was going through some stuff at this time we were kicking it cool situationship type situation um and an incident had happened between me and him that only me him would know and i told her and i told her about it and when i told her about it me thinking because we're supposed to be really really close that it's not going anywhere that once I'm telling you, once I'm telling you, that's it, right? Okay, so at this time, I worked at Walmart. I worked a 2D11 shift. Also, Busy Bee worked the 2D11 shift. But at this particular moment, this particular time, Busy Bee is out of town. So I'm at work. So on my way home from work, or was it the next day? No, so once I get home, yeah, once I get home, all of the friends in the friend group and people that I'm cool with who was at this other lady's house, who also, we all sing in the choir, we all, um, you know, interact with each other at church, but we are really cool. When I get home, they're leaving. And I'm like, hey, hey, where y'all going? And they was like, girl... Bye, we gotta go. See you later, girl. Bye, we gotta go. Literally, they're walking out of the house in like a lot. You know how like <laughs> when the police show up, like it's a party going on and the police show up and everybody is dispersing. That's how they were leaving. And I was like, mm, okay. But I'm not thinking nothing of it because again, I work to the 11. So by the time I'm getting home, it's late. So I figured, hey, they got other things to do it's already late they're leaving no big deal like i said we're all in all in the same friend group so it don't matter <clears throat> the next morning i get a phone call from at the time he's not my son's father because my kid is nowhere he might have been baking and i didn't even know because i found out about tyler I, I found out i was pregnant when i was five months five and a half months so he might have been baking and I didn't even know. Anyway, I get a call from him and he's like, I need you to meet me right now. And I'm like, what's up? And he was like, no, I need you to meet me right now. I was like, okay. So I meet him and we meet up and he's extremely upset. He's extremely livid. Upset is an understatement. He's livid. And he says, one thing I admired about you or what I thought about you was you were extremely private and you don't sell your business. So I'm a little confused on how people are coming to me and telling me this incident that went on that nobody knew about but me and you. How does all these people know now? And I was like, well, what's the incident? What, what are people saying? And this one incident that only me and him knew, which I told Olivia, 
they knew. And I said, <laughs> I only told one person. And he was like, well, I'm not the enemy here. That should tell you something. Okay. So I didn't react. I apologized to him because, again, I thought I was talking to her in confidence. So I apologized to him for it happening because now this stuff is out there and I have to pretend that that didn't happen because I'm covering my tracks because my trust has been broken. So when I get home, Olivia is there. And so she was like, what happened? What did he say? Girl, what did he say? And I was like, nothing. It's handled. Don't worry about it. So I didn't let on. Right? So, <laughs> again, Keish is in this friend group. One thing, one thing, and I told y'all this before in one of my mini vlogs, Keish knew everybody's business. <laughs> but would keep it to herself. But I, one person I, I know for sure I could trust Keish, right? So I hit Keish up and I was like, I need to talk to you. And so she was like, okay, what's up? And I was like, nope, face to face. So I meet Keish face to face and I ask, why did y'all leave so fast? And was this discussed? Was that why y'all were leaving? So Keish broke it down to me of how Olivia plotted. You called each and every one of them. You sat down and spilled every secret, every little thing that I told you, you told them. You called them over to specifically tell them all of my secrets. I said, wait, what? She said, yep. She called us all out of the blue sat us down and started telling all your business which was why when you pulled up she told us we had to leave and we left okay so i didn't say shit i kind of kept it cool and waited until busy b got back because when busy b got back mm, my situationship, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, I'm gonna call it situationship because it, it's a lot that, um, when I said that, <laughs> anyway, so you call Busy B as well to confront Busy B. Busy B was out of town, so Busy B didn't have anything, any knowledge, nothing of what's going on, she wasn't even in town. So, you confronted Busy B as well. And Busy B, like, what's going on? Because I don't know nothing that y'all talking about. And so, after I talked to Keisha, and Keisha informed me of what Olivia did, I was like, oh, okay, I'm moving out. So, Busy B was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You my friend. I can't stay here with her. I need, like, we said we were going to work together. And at this time, other things that was going on in Busy B's life, she was like, I... Friend, I need you to stay here. Like, I can't stay here with her. <laughs> and then, even if both of you leave, I can't do this by myself. And I was like, <sighs> so because she came through for me when I needed her, I had to come through for her. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't just up and leave. Anyway, so. anyway so after that i was like okay so i started pulling back pulling away from her pulling away from olivia because it's like girl like i'm supposed to be able to trust you and i can't so even before that we went to her hometown and when we went to her hometown she introduced me as her sister like we had the same dad she's her mom's only child but she introduced me literally as her sister. And so, like, I don't know. It was like she was showing me off kind of like a trophy type situation. I don't know. It was it was weird. It was weird. But if you watch Saltburn, you will understand what I'm saying. Where it's like the, the trophy-like person. Like, yeah. 
anyway so the next incident was the um like i said the next incident was um like i said it was a military base and a lot of the military military people came to the same church right so there was this family who um mom was going out of town and dad worked at night and they need somebody to not really watch the kids but be there while the kids were asleep so it was like can you do it because i guess other other people couldn't do it but at the point in time, like, I was looking for extra money. So, I was like, yeah, I'll do it. No problem. Right? So, wife was out of town. Husband worked that night. The boys, once the boys went to sleep, I went to sleep. The next morning, I could hear, like, the husband. And I was like, dang, he already home. I should have been up. But he had already got the boys up, gave them breakfast, and it was whatever. And he was like, oh, you know, I just let you sleep because you seemed like you was tired. And I was like, oh, it's cool. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and go Cause you home you with your kids. There's no need for me to still be here, right? So Wednesday when the wife showed up for Bible study and I'm excited to see her like hey girl, how you doing? She was kind of hey She was dry and I was like, okay. I was like, well, maybe she had a bad day or whatever. I let it be not tripping So Sunday no Saturday we had choir rehearsal again this wife is in the choir like we all run in the same circles I wish I had my photo album because I have pictures of all of us we all run in the same circles wife Saturday still kind of dry you laughing you talking with everybody else you dry with me and I'm like man what the and I was like okay hey I know for me, if I haven't done, if I know like my conscience is clear and I haven't done anything to you, there's no need for me to constantly like pull at you, trying to figure out what's going on because I'm going to respect your space. It is what it is because I know sometimes I'm a, I'm the type of person where I like to be by myself. So it's whatever. It's whatever. Not tripping. None of that. Right. So, the incident happens with Olivia's boss. Military police are in the house, and it's a whole lot of buzzing and a lot of stuff going on where people who haven't been talking are now starting to talk, and they're starting to figure out that a lot of the things that was being told to them and the common denominator now is Olivia. If that's making sense. Like, you know how people say, you know, spread discord or whatever. But Olivia is at the common denominator for a lot of stuff. So, with this situation going on, <clears throat> the wife now comes up to me. And she, this is when she warns me. And because I can't hang around people like that anymore. Because if, if she did that to him, imagine what she'll do to you. And baby. She won line. Well, she was like, come here, let me talk to you for a minute. Let's talk because of this situation. So she was like, remember when you came and you watched the boys? And I was like, yeah, you... You started acting funny after that, which, you know, I thought was kind of weird. And I was like, but I figured, you know, like you were in a bad mood or whatever. I said, because even when you came to be like, you know, I'm going to pay you. And I was like, your husband already paid me. And you made the statement like, oh, he already paid you. Like, what do, what do I need to pay you for? And I'm like, it was weird. I was like, the whole interaction was just weird when you got back in town. She said, yeah, it was weird because... Olivia told me that you told her that you slept with my husband while I was out of town and you was watching the boys. I said, okay, wait. Let me tell you how calculated the girl was. Now, the night when, I mean, the week that I was, before I was supposed to watch the boys or whatever. We were 
at their house. Me, Olivia, it was like a group of us. And we was doing a game night. So her and her husband was beefing. So I know y'all like, why would she even believe that? Because her and her husband was beefing. Olivia played upon that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we are close. Me and Olivia are close. So I'm going to tell you my secrets. So why would she think? that Olivia would lie and Olivia was playing a part because truth be told allegedly Olivia wanted her husband not me not me like I got a lot of hits and knocks <laughs> for being accused for sleeping with the men or messing with the men that Olivia was actually messing with it wasn't Back to the story. Why would you even think that's true when both of you are in the military? You are out of town, true, but your husband works at night. So all you had to do was go check with his, uh, what was it called, first shirt. All you have to do is go check with his first shirt. You could go check with his boss to see if he was at work that night. Like, she was like, yeah, lunchtime. Yeah. She was like, girl, it was just a lot running. Cause she was like, she was laying it on thick. A lot running through my mind. Because she was she was like, you know how you and my husband, I almost called his name. You and my husband play, you know, like y'all get along. Y'all have a good time. And I started looking at that because she was egging it on. Like, you see how they play? You see how they get along? You see how she was like, yes, girl, she told me they sleep together. They, they slept together that night. I said, I didn't sleep with your husband. Your husband was nowhere near the house. He left and went to work. You were on the phone when he was walking out the door to go to work, remember? I said, when he got home, I was still asleep. I heard him in the kitchen when he was feeding the boys. I got up, I got dressed, I left. She was like, he said the same thing. I don't know. She was just laying it on thick. I didn't know what to believe. She's like, but I want to apologize now because of how the military thing went on. And you have to go watch that story time. Of how that went on and how much speculation and backed and um like behind the scenes talk what was going on and how supposedly people were saying how she set that man up. That kind of made her look at the situation differently. So again, now that you did that situation, when it came down to <clears throat> calling everybody over in our friend group to spill something that was extremely intimate to them, to where everybody knew all this stuff that was going on and mind you lo and behold even though you did that there was another girl in the friend group who supposedly had dealings with my son's father <laughs> and so you the other girl used certain situa certain situations to kind of maneuver with that as well which show right so the other girl the other friend you supposedly allegedly rumor mill had dealings with my son's father right and you denied it but when something happened between you and him and y'all was beefing and y'all whatever happened i don't know but you tried to use my secrets against me to hurt him because you was like oh his little precious angel, his little precious, his little precious angel, wait, just wait till I tell his ex-wife all of this business that I got, all of this business that I got. So, the rumor wheel was y'all was messing around. So, y'all was messing around because why would you be so mad at whatever happened between y'all? And then, why would you even want to use me? friends how many of us have them that's a whole different other true colors on your end too yeah it was like they started dropping like that friend group started dropping like flies 
with with nastiness but olivia, olivia was something different she was something on a whole nother level okay so the next thing was <sighs> The next thing was like the final like ugh, okay so once i found out i was pregnant like again i was five and a half months and at this point i'm hanging with somebody else and i'm gonna call her gifted but gifted was saying how she was another person who was saying something ain't right about that girl you need to get away from her it's real weird like she doing a lot of weird stuff behind your back you need to remove yourself from that whole situation right so gifted, gifted. I'm starting to hang out with gifted. Um, at this point in time, I found out I was pregnant, and I'm dealing with that, and I'm trying to wrap my mind around the simple fact that I am five and a half months pregnant, trying to figure out how I can get rid of the baby, and so forth and so forth. Like it's just so much going on, and and going to the doctor, trying to figure all this stuff out. So you leave a note. <laughs> you leave a note on the desk, like when you walked into, because we came through, through the laundry room slash kitchen, and then once you come into the living room, there's a desk like sitting right here. So when you come in, like you, you couldn't miss it. So you left this note where it was like a dear diary to yourself, but you left it out so everybody could read it. So me and Busy B read it and we started laughing because it was like, girl, because it was more like, I feel like I'm so by myself. I don't know why my sister's not talking to me. I just found out that my sister was pregnant. My sister's pregnant. She didn't tell me I haven't been to any of the doctor's appointments. Yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. Like it went on and it was like, you were seeking attention because you're not taking accountability that you been talking behind my back and I know, but you don't know I know. You know I know, but you don't know I know, so to speak. Anyway, so she um <laughs> she left a note. I didn't react to it because a lot of times people are looking for a reaction, and I didn't react to it. I went on about my business. It's whatever. So the situation happened with the military police, and we kind of start communicating a little bit not really because i'm still side out you side eyeing you and looking at you crazy um i'm hanging out with this other girl named gifted gifted <laughs> gifted had a roommate as well who did not like olivia like olivia was giving out bad spirit bad vibes you gotta stay away bad, bad, bad. like nobody was feeling her and so gifted was like you have got to get away from that girl you have got to break away from that girl well lo and behold me and olivia stay in the same um apartment complex so in all actuality and truth be told gifted lived in the complex first but it made sense for me to move in the complex because it was close to my job and so just in case i didn't have a ride or anything that would occur i can walk to work if that makes sense so um ty finally comes home because when ty was born he didn't come straight home ty had to be flown to shans because ty had a birth defect whole nother story ty finally comes home um we're excited we're spending time in she Okay, let me back up. While I was pregnant, like, I kind of forgave her, so to speak. Like, trying to give her a chance because she was like, you know, just give me a chance. Like, uh, you you don't understand. Like, a lot of that stuff was, you, you misunderstood what I was doing. Like, I was protecting you. I was making sure, like, people weren't telling your business. Yada, yada, so to speak. Something like that. You know what I'm saying? So my let me make sure she's my grand aunt i think she's my grand aunt 
Yes. She's my grand aunt. Yes. <laughs> so my grand aunt had passed away. So I I hadn't been home in a long time. So I went home for my grand aunt's funeral. And so at this point in time, because everyone, everybody in my family knew I never wanted kids, but I am a huge, big, pregnant, swollen, looking absolutely hideous. My nose is huge as hell. My neck is black as soot. My face is huge. Like, I'm humongous. I'm humongous. I am swollen. I carry water. Horrible, right? So, she, Olivia comes with me to my grandma's funeral because I can't drive so she drove me down there because i'm here like i'm barely barely making it. like my stomach is scraping <laughs> the steering wheel so she drove me down there she drove me home go to the funeral get out and we're all like you know watching sitting having a good time having a good time talking and anytime like my family members would talk to me or anything certain things they would say like she would jump in and my family looked at her like like they you know giving her like the side eye because it's like girl calm down chill out like chill out calm down so um once we go view the body we're sitting down we're in the service and i'm you know massaging my hands because my hands are extremely swollen so like my hand is down and so olivia is doing this and i can see more well, because my mom was sitting on the side of me and i can see my mom doing this because she's just rubbing my hands and i'm not thinking anything of it because my hands are swollen they hurt so i'm thinking like yo she's massaging my hands and my mom is giving like a weird look right so after the service is over and we get to the house before it's time for me to go, my mom was like, come on, let me talk to you for a minute. And so we walk like, we had this huge backyard. I think I had pictures. I don't know. I may insert it. I don't know. But my mom was like, come, come in, let me talk to you. So we walk in the backyard. And so she was like, her rubbing your hand during the service was weird to me. <laughs> that was very weird to me. And I was like. And so she was like, why, why you, you don't think that's weird? And I was like, oh my, like my hands are swollen. Like they hurt. Like she was, she was like, I get like a friend, like massage sheet, but she was like, no, she's rubbing like this. She was like, it seems intimate, like sensual. I don't, I don't like that. Like just watch your back. Like that, that's a little weird to me. I was like, okay, yes, ma'am. Like I, I never told her anything about the other stuff but took it put it in a compartment noted right see so, you know, we are in the same apartment apartment complex i have tyler tyler's out of the hospital tyler comes home right so um my mom had already left because my mom stayed with me for two weeks after i had tyler so she had already left and at this point i'm tired i'm exhausted right so gifted we usually come over and try to help but she had to work or whatever so at this point um olivia was like girl you need help um i'll watch the baby for you so i was severely anemic after i had tyler and it was this one particular night where i was sick and i knew I couldn't hold him and I was like damn so I had gifted up gifted couldn't come because the gifted had to work and so she was like um I was like oh, I don't have a choice and my biggest thing was I was afraid of dropping Tyler because I was severely anemic so I was afraid that I was gonna drop him and he was so little but I know at, at this point like it's I need help so I called her and I was like listen can you watch Tyler for a couple of hours? I'll come get him. Once I wake up, I just need to sleep so I can kind of replenish. She was like, okay, yeah, girl, no problem. So I let her take Tyler. When I woke up to go get him, I'm knocking on the door, knocking on the door. Her car is outside. I'm knocking on the door, knocking on the door, knocking on the door. She never answers. Her car is there. She never comes to the door. 
went home calling her calling her calling her she never answers <sighs> so i was like okay i'm just gonna pray about it. i'm gonna cover my baby and i'm gonna go to sleep because truth be told like i wasn't a hundred percent but it was my baby it was my responsibility and i just needed like a good nap so to speak anyway so the next morning i was awakened by gifted calling me and gifted um she was like girl i'm outside i'm outside open the door i want to see my baby um i opened the door and i knew gifted was gonna be pissed off and i was like oh, he's not here so she was like girl oh your mama came and get him and i was like nah he's next door <laughs> she was like bitch what the fuck why are you and i was like girl i was sick i called you you couldn't come like what was I supposed to do? And I was like, but when I went to go get him, she went and answered the door. I called, she went and answered the phone. She was like, girl, go get your, go get, and I was like, okay, okay, okay. So I went and knocked on the door and she went and answered. Her car is still there. So I came back and I was like, she's not answering. So I called and I was like, girl, open the door. I've been calling you repeatedly, open the door. Give me my baby before I have to act a fool. So once I left that message, she brought Ty to me. She know she was like, girl, I didn't hear you. I you know she was like, and I, you know, last night. Did you come last night? Did you come yesterday? Yes. You didn't answer the door. She was like, girl, I just thought you, you know, it was sleeping. You forgot. You overslept or whatever. So she brought Ty back to me. She left um because gifted. It's not a fan of her and she she knows it and so once she realized gifted was there she dropped tie off she left she left call was gone and i was like okay like ty was fine like his hair was all picked out or whatever but and ty had really really curly hair and i was like mm, let me you know watch my baby i was excited to see him so while i'm watching him up and looking at him there's a square a perfect square cut out of his foot like the bottom of his heel there's a perfect square and I was like maybe I'm tripping <laughs> so I look at his other foot and like cuz you know it's babies and I was like maybe his skin is peeling and I'm looking all over his body no peeling nothing different just on this one foot there's a perfect square cut of his skin cut out of his foot so I showed Gifted and old Gifted lost it. Don't you ever in your mother in life let him go back over there. Damn, it's sick. You don't know what the she was doing to your baby. And I was like, okay, 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 okay. So Gifted is going off, going off. And she was like, I hope she had that door because I want him. I don't like that. I can't stand that. I can't stand her. Oh, I hate her. I hate her. Like, Gifted is going in. Like, whoa. <laughs> Wish I could understand because the, the shit was weird. It was weird. It was, when I tell you, it was a perfect square. It was a perfect square at the heel of my son's foot. Like, a perfect square. Nothing else. Just that. I don't know. Weird. Anyway, so after that, of course, I never let my son <laughs> go back over there. And I was like, I, it's, it's a no. I just didn't want her to hold him. I didn't want none of that. But lo and behold, my son's father, I, I can recall, like, because I would take it, take him up there, like, take him to, to him so he can watch him. And he had a secretary. And so, like, the secretary was my son's godmother so you would like at this one particular point i had a job interview it was something i had to go to and i took him i took my sons up there i took my son up there so the secretary could watch him because the secretary was his godmother and he kept holding me at the door and then when i got in the office olivia was in the office and i was like you were holding me at the door because she was holding my son and i told her not to hold my son anymore you think i didn't know but i knew I knew, but I let a lot of shit slide. I shouldn't let slide. Anyway, 
So after that situation, she kind of started doing things on her own, doing things for herself or whatever. Like, we really weren't talking, really weren't hanging together because that was just past weird for me. Like, extremely weird. It was other things that was coming out about other people, but it was like, it was just crazy. I don't know. Even Busy Bee was like, that girl was sick. She wanted to be you. She would manipulate everybody around you to keep you by yourself so she can only be around you. She she emulated stuff about you. Like, she always wanted to dress like you. She just wanted to be you. And I just think it was weird. Anyway, I said those certain instances because me watching Salt Burn, like, some people can have... <laughs> more you can have a how can i say it sometimes people look at you and want to be you want to emulate or are jealous of the smoke and mirrors that they've created in their mind about you they feel like if they become who you are or if they're around you they get the same response or the same accolades the same reactions that's just simply not true but also just be careful of people who try to emulate um people who try to put themselves in your life because it's some weird people out there some scary shit like the shit it was just weird like watching salt burn it was like yo you had this person who pretended to be your friend who pretended to love you who claimed they would go above and beyond and the whole time like she was envious and she wanted my life even though she was in a better situation than i was she still wanted like the reactions and how people loved me she wanted people to love her that way um she wanted the response from men that i got like it it was weird was weird all i'm saying is just like go watch salt burns to get more of what i'm talking about but just be careful because there are really some sick people out there sick people and i truly believe like <laughs> olivia would be a really cool person if she didn't go to the extreme she just wasn't the person for me so to speak if that makes sense. I don't know. I know the story was kind of like all over the place. But watching South Burn. It kind of just made me bring up those emphasis of. Like was this a cult? Like was this a friendship? This was weird. Because people was using. Situations and rumors. Against each other. And trying to play. Pe like play they were playing major, 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 doing major things, playing with people's lives. Like, it was weird. It was weird. It was weird. Like, watching Saltburn was like, whoa. Whoa. Like, for you to say, like, you loved me, but yet behind my back you was trying to destroy me, was scary. I love you the most because you're definitely the dopest in real life. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.